History is the key to unlocking the mysteries of a haunt. That is cool. And that's the original. That's all this. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Join us on our journey as we get to the bottom of the truth and real history of these locations. You are watching Haunted History of the Paranormal. Thank you for tuning in. Today we are in the soybean capital of the world, Decatur, Illinois, getting ready to step into the most historically haunted theater in the country. We are going to interview John Winterbauer and a few of his colleagues from the Haunted Decatur Tours. After the interview, the HHP team will get a chance to investigate the theater for ourselves. We are in the Lincoln Theater in Decatur, Illinois with Mr. John, who is the co-author of Illinois Hauntings. And you are also one of the tour guides of the Decatur Haunted oh, Tours. Decatur Tours. And this is an exclusive investigation and interview in this theater because not a lot of people are welcome. So thank you so much for having us in and Absolutely. working for like nine months to get us in here. It's, it's been a while. It's been a bit, yeah. It's been a, but it's been absolutely worth it. So let's start on the history of the Lincoln Theater. Where, okay. Wherever you want to start. Start at the beginning. Start at the beginning. Uh, it was built in 1916 on the grounds uh, of the Decatur Arcade Hotel, which had burned to the ground the year previous. There were several deaths in that fire. Uh, we don't know how many uh, because the bodies were just burned up and left on the property, essentially. Uh, and then we went and built on top of it. Good if, times. Yeah, if Steven Spielberg's taught us nothing, it's... Right, you, you gotta don't move build, the body. Yeah, you don't build on top of dead guys. Uh, and this theater has been on it almost since the beginning. And if you look around it, this is a vaudeville theater. Uh, some of the biggest names in vaudeville played here. And, and some of that energy is still in the building. Uh, the Who Barry, are some of the stars that came through? Uh, the Barrymores, John and Ethel, Drew's grandparents. Mm -hmm. they, they were here. Um, uh, Jack Dempsey. Heavyweight champion of the world, he fought here. Chico Marx of the Marx Brothers. Oh, really? Young comedian from Chicago. Uh, came down and lived in Decatur for several months and he worked here three nights a week, $50 a week. And his job was to, to tell jokes and teach the, uh, the Charleston to the audience. Uh, his name was Bob Hope. You know him. <laughs> very, Bob Hope. very young man. Uh, our magicians, Harry Houdini. Now, the legend says Harry Houdini played on the stage. Uh, the truth is we can't find a, a date for that. We can't find advertising for it, can't find any of that, but the long-held tradition is Houdini did play our stage. Uh, we believe it was during the time he was up and coming. Uh, he was part of the vaudeville troupe and therefore didn't get a top billing. We do know that Harry Blackstone played here several times, and Blackstone and Houdini, while being friendly, were very competitive and followed each other around the circuits. We, uh, Troy talked to uh, Harry Blackstone Jr who said, if my dad played on that stage, I guarantee you Houdini played on that stage. Kind of so, like the whole, the prestige exactly, that movie. Except they, they, they liked each other and weren't right. trying to kill each other off. And right. I don't think Tesla was involved, but <laughs> nonetheless. Um, so we're fairly confident Houdini did play the stage and one day we're gonna find him. But we do know Blackstone did. And Blackstone played here several times, but uh, his first time, and then the year escapes me, but the first time he played, uh, made a bet to the audience uh, two nights I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can tell me how I do this next trick. And then he promptly made a horse disappear from our stage and kept his money. No one's figured it out to this day uh, how he did it. And, and there's no trap doors on our stage, none of that. So I, I'm baffled by it. And we found a horse skeleton in the no, <laughs> completely untrue. Um, the second time was night, or the last time was 1942. And while this building was built to be fireproof, it had never really been tested. Um, he was here during a children's matinee, a thousand kids out here, and oh, a fire much. broke out in the Rambo Pharmacy next door, and they evacuated the building. They told him you have to evacuate, and uh, within 15 minutes, he'd cleared this place very calmly. He just told them, if you want to help me with the trick, we have to go outside, and they just all got up and walked out very calmly, including a woman who was so big she was stuck in her chair. They had done bolt her chair and carry it out. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he would later say on national television, the greatest trick he ever did was make a thousand kids disappear from a theater in Decatur. Oh, in our that's theater. cool. Yeah, so that's cool. So that's some of the vaudevillians. Um, in later years, we had silent films here and then, and then talking films. Um, when it closed in the 80s, after, the, after they closed it down as a theater, they tried to re revive it a few times, and we had you know, Alabama played here, and uh, Davy Jones of the Monkees. 
I love uh, Davy Jones. Yeah, poor Davy. Yeah, but, uh, Rest in peace, Davy Jones. <laughs> Davy was here and Blue Oyster Cult. Blue Oyster Cult. Oh, cool. I'm a big BOC Don't fear the Reaper. Yeah, the whole more, Reaper. Reaper. Yeah. The, the more cowbell uh -huh. that was here. No. <laughs> but the, the BOC did play here. Uh, and then they closed it down. And it was pretty much abandoned. Birds, bats, ghosts is what we say. Uh, the three Bs. The three Bs. And then during the... Oh, two Bs and a G, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that missed both of the us. <laughs> the, uh, the, the renovations began in the, in the 90s, and they're, they're ongoing. But uh, we've, got, we've had shows ongoing. We had Skid Row played here. I did a lot of research over the past nine months of this place because I've been so excited to get in. And you are very familiar with the cater mm -hmm. as well. Now, I had read that the big fire from the hotel was like the start. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned there was another fire next door. Mm -hmm. I heard that there was, after the hotel burnt, there was numerous fires throughout Decatur. Decatur had a history of catching on fire. In fact, the Arcade Hotel in, in 1915, that wasn't the first fire there. Uh, I think it was 1905, they had a previous fire. Uh, that didn't do as much damage. The, other, the next one burned it to the ground. There was another fire that affected the Lincoln in the 60s. And if you look at the old pictures, you can see a, a facade above the marquee. That mm -hmm. burned off. Uh, but the building is fireproof, and, and there's, there was no structural damage done at that time. So, uh, Just it, a little cosmetic. Yeah, and that's, that's why the outer shell could burn, but the, the interior is supposed to remain intact. Our, our booth up there, you can't see it, but the, uh, the projection booth was put in in 1923. It's fireproof because of nitrate film. And they talk about it in the paper. It, if a fire broke out, if one of those films burst into flame, the projectionist had to seal it from the inside. <laughs> he couldn't get out. He had to go down and, with the ship pretty yeah, much. So thank God he, that was never tested. But uh, yeah, imagine that horrifying Wow. Job. That, yeah. Yeah. But so that, with all those fires, that's why the designers of the Lincoln Theater made it absolutely fireproof specifically the, the hotel fire but uh yeah and if you go down we go downstairs you can see the bricks are all marked fireproof and oh that's cool yeah and the boilers were in a, a separate building off the premises and they, they took a lot of precautions to make sure because you know theater fires killed hundreds of people when one the iroquois theater in chicago burned uh, all those kids were jumping out of the top stories into the alley leaving that whole alleyway haunted uh -huh. and the, these guys knew that so they tried to keep that from happening here. And uh, I don't think the theater was ever in real danger when Blackstone was here, but as a safety precaution, they right. evacuated everybody, so. Got, got to do that. Yeah. So we were talking earlier, because I came across a story about Red. Mm -hmm. Red is one of the ghosts. These are long-standing ghosts. Yeah. Long-standing ghosts. Now, I read, and it was later found out the truth mm -hmm. about what happened, and then it was corrected but what i read was he fell off the catwalk during a show and died mm -hmm. that's or something similar to that and that's the story we were given um, when troy did the research for haunted decatur troy taylor i keep saying troy when, taylor when troy taylor did haunted decatur uh he was i'll given, meet him one day <laughs> i don't know where he's at we can call him um he did the research for the book and he was told that there was a projectionist a, a, a jack of all trades really he was he worked in the theater here his name was red and he was 60 feet above the stage in the catwalk, and he slipped and he fell during a performance, caught his arm on the pin rail, and ripped it off and threw him into the center of the stage where he died in front of the shocked crowd. And his ghost, his one-armed redheaded ghost, has been seen walking through the building, uh, particularly at the back part of the stage or the spiral staircase that I'll show you later. But uh, uh, that's the story we were given, and that's the story we rolled with for many years during Haunted Decatur tours, and that's the story he published. And then we stumble across the truth, and the truth of the matter is there was a man named Red. His name was Roy Forkner, and uh, they called him Big Red. He had shocking red hair, and he was a projectionist and a stagehand and all that. All that's true, except he went off to war in World War I and lost his arm and came back and just amazed everybody because it takes a lot to open these curtains and things, and he was doing it with one arm. So he kind of became a legend. He also worked at the Empress Theater across town, another vaudeville theater. Um, and one afternoon, Roy went up on the stage and ate his lunch and laid down to take a nap, and he just never woke up. And that's. But he did pass away here. He did die in the building. 
uh, but he didn't plummet to his death. Right. And but see, that's that's yeah. the misconception that mm -hmm. happens with so many of these locations, and that's what I like about HHP is we want the true history. Yeah. We we want to know what goes on, and for you guys to be able to say, okay, scratch that. That's not what happened. And now, when you go into your tours, you actually tell that story, even yeah. though it's not a tragic death. It's still he passed away here, and, and he, he loved this theater. Right, and, and that's the thing. We, we corrected that story know, maybe three years ago. And whereas Red used to be seen a couple times a year anyway, no one's seen him since. And I think that was his whole thing. He's hanging around the theater going, hey, boneheads, I didn't fall out of the ceiling. Uh, I was better than that, I kind of think was his point. And we, we corrected that. And he's gone somewhere. Uh, maybe we can get him back. I can channel him with the red hair. Well, Adam, yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> Adam, Adam White and, and Jake Bonnet, my, my co-partners in the, in the Haunted Decatur Tours, were here filming Adam's MTV, I'm Addicted to Meth, or, no, it was, it was caffeine, wasn't it, Jake? It was Addicted to Caffeine. <laughs> he filmed this for MTV, and they came in and did their thing, and uh, they had an ovelus up on the stage, and the MTV guys were walking around filming, and that ovelus started over and over, red, 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 and Adam says, I'm waiting for it to go rum, rum. <laughs> Uh, so we wonder if he's not here, and that was because those things don't repeat themselves, right. and they did it five or six times, and you know, so he might still be here. He's just not as unhappy about it as he used to be. Maybe I don't know. Hmm. We like him. We're, we're kind of friends with him, so I kind of hope he shows up. Hopefully, nice. we get to see Red. Yeah. Well, why don't we go ahead and take a tour of some of sure. the locations, and then Missy and Matt and myself are going to hunt and look for Red. So stay tuned. All right, we are on the stage. So what goes on on the stage here? A wide variety of things go on on the stage. 60 feet up is the notorious catwalk that Red did not plummet to his death from. <laughs> um, we have had any number of paranormal events uh, throughout this whole area. The auditorium is notorious for seats folding up and down, people appearing in the seats, uh, that little irritating kid that kicks the back of your seat at the theater, he's out there. People walk behind you and it's it's an active it's still apparently an active theater because they're still responding in those ways uh, people walk down the aisles people hear uh, footsteps and stuff in the aisles one night uh, my buddy Adam and I were here waiting for our late tour to come in we were sitting on the edge of the stage and the light was on like the ghost light was on here and uh, dead quiet and all of a sudden from out in the auditorium we hear it just stops and we could see the auditorium there was no one here <laughs> so you think so, that's more of like a residual it's probably life? residual i would imagine um there are intelligent hauntings here uh red for one if he's still around the other night on haunted decatur and see we we never promise anything weird's going to happen on these tours but sometimes it does and this is what happened just a couple of saturdays ago i'm on the stage and i pace when i tell the stories so i'm walking back and forth and i'm standing over here and I started to walk back and this woman says, oh my God, there's somebody there. And I turned and there was a guy like six feet behind me, just standing there like, go on with your stories. And then he was gone. People took a bunch of pictures and then he was gone. Uh, I couldn't see him quick enough to identify him or, or get a good look at him. But then as I continue, and now I'm leery of the fact there's a guy behind me, uh, I'm getting ready to wrap the stories up and I'm standing over here by the light and the house lights were off and it was dark, but up in the mezzanine I could see someone standing. And we see shadowy figures through the buildings sometimes and out in the hallways and things, but this guy was standing there and I thought it was our stage manager to the point where I finally yelled, hey, is that you, Doug? And there's no response and I asked a guy in the audience that had a flashlight to shine this light and there was a man in like a brown overcoat standing there and this, the light hit him and he was there for a second and then he was gone. And I'm talking like 50 people witnessed this, both of them, same night. A couple of nights later, Adam and Jake are here. They bring a group up on the stage and they're here talking and there's a door over here that leads to the basement and they heard that door shut and the stage door is right there. Someone walked past the stage door and down into the basement and there wasn't anybody there but the whole group saw that as well. We've had people up here during the tours and heard people walk across the back of the stage. Uh, People of, oh, we were here one night and the basement door downstairs was slamming open and shut, which doesn't happen. That's not normal. Uh, footsteps on the stage are pretty common. Uh, 
Troy's got a story about being here in the 90s where he was down, he was actually backstage working on something and someone walked across the stage and he came out to see who it was and there's nobody here. Uh, lots of stories about the, the spiral staircase in the back. And this is where they've seen the one-armed ghost the most. They've seen Red here the most. Uh, there was a Patty, uh, Patty Klein tribute band here uh, and the, the girls were changing back here in this area. They had it all blocked off as a changing area and they kept complaining to management that there was a guy with one arm standing here on the stairs watching them dress. So yeah, old Red is, uh, <laughs> you know, checking out the chicks, why not? It's more alive uh, than we think. Yeah, and, and then Troy's got a great story. He brought a, a film crew in here back in the 90s when the place was completely deserted. There was no electricity, the stage was completely bare, no curtains, no nothing. It was him and a cameraman and the reporter. And at the end of it, the very vocal, uh, the cameraman very vocally against paranormal, didn't believe any of it, but he decided they wanted to go to the top and film. So Troy and him ascended the staircase, leaving the reporter back here on the back part of the stage. And they get to the top and they hear her very slowly in the dark walking up these stairs. He had the only light in the place, his camera, and he yells down, hey, is that enough light, as he shines the light down the center post, and they can still hear her coming up, but she doesn't respond. Uh, so he yells again, is that enough light? And from over at the back part of the stage, she yells, what? Because <laughs> she wasn't here. Oh, they wow. could still hear, her, hear someone coming up the stairs. Uh, and then it stopped. And then the cameraman freaked out. He ran out. He ran down here, took his camera, and ran out the building and uh, he's out yeah sat there sat there and chain smoked until <laughs> until <laughs> troy and then came out no one ever made it to the top but we assume it was red and this is he died back here somewhere so so this green room is really really active and people have heard the sounds of children playing down here in here and, and they like long hair they like women's hair um in fact i can't say the name of the band i'm sworn to secrecy but it was a major 80s hair metal band that was playing here and those guys got tormented in fact one of their roadies got his hair pulled and was freaking out so bad we were going to do a tour of the building after the show and he he's like no way and he was he was shaking and i said dude you were so not metal and he 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 manned up but he still didn't do the tour but that's that's kind of what happens in here they like long hair and we don't know who they are and we don't know who the kids are uh why there's kids in this basement couldn't tell you but uh but hmm. that's what people report and we've got the back room here. The back room, people hear a lot of stuff down here. It's more uh, more audio, a lot of weird electronics. Now, we do have the electronics for the building here, but that seems to be not affecting equipment. And that's our, our friend Luke Nalaborski from American Ghost Society, um, who lives down by you guys. But uh, we do these overnights. This is one of the locations. Luke likes to bring people down here, and he loves the basement. So. One night I decided to hold the basement door shut on him as a joke because he, he came down with a group and came up and they came up right behind him. And he didn't know the building was empty, so the basement was empty. So when he came down to get them, there's nobody here. So I'm at the doorway listening to him talk. I'm at the top of the stairs and I'm sitting in the doorway holding it shut and I hear him talking to somebody on the other side. And then Luke had actually come down here and the place was empty. He, he walked in, nobody here. and he thought that was strange but as he started to walk out somebody from back here a woman said hello and he thought that's weird and he turns the light on there's nobody here and so he turns it off and starts walking back it was dark then he gets to the doorway we just came through and from right over his shoulder the woman says hello and he ran up the stairs to find me holding the door shut and when he got through the door then we realized there was nobody on the other side, but I'd listened to someone have a conversation the whole time he was down here. So there was nobody up there, nobody down here yet. We're hearing audible voices. Oh, wow. I'll show you something. Now, I told you about Houdini, and the legend says he played here, and you can only see two of them. And they say, see the hook? There's another one somewhere. But the hook's up here, or there's the other one. They say he... Uh, had, there's a hole cut in the stage, they call it the Houdini hole, it's just a, about a foot and a half by maybe six inch hole, uh, that they say was a drain for one of his tanks, and these are the hooks that they installed to, to catch the device. So. Cool. so if Houdini played here, he may have installed those. Probably not him, personally, but kind of cool. There's, there's two more, but they're under the ceiling. A little bit of cool history on the off chance that it's true. Oh, absolutely.
And I think it probably is. Now this is a personal ghost story. I had to be here at seven o'clock on a February morning. We were doing an event. I was gonna meet Troy and our stage manager, Doug, here. And I got here at seven and I was looking through the front doors. I didn't have a key. So I had my face pressed up against the front door seeing if anybody was in the lobby. And a man walked out of here all across the lobby and he turned and he walked up these stairs into the balcony. And all the while I'm pounding on the door trying to get his attention. He doesn't respond. I think it's Doug. I called Doug and he's not here. He's still at home. Troy was still at home. When Doug got down here, I walked through this whole building and there wasn't a soul in it. Wow. And only then did I realize that, oh wow, I just watched one of these ghosts walk through the lobby. He looked as real as any of us. He was a, he was a fairly impressive uh, figure. I mean, he looked solid. So. Wow. Very cool. And he walked up here and who he was, I don't know. This might be the most active place in the theater right here. Only because it's, it's more audience stuff. I mean, there's still audience activity. Uh, but people see people up here quite a bit. In fact, we're, when you're downstairs, you can look right here and see people uh, regularly. Uh, some friends of ours were here one night during a ghost hunt last June. And they were sitting down here and they had a, a laser grid spread across the floor down there. And someone stood up and walked out down the aisle. They, didn't film it, but they saw it. And then later on, they came down to this little room. And they walked in here thinking they'd investigate. And they walked in with a flashlight and there was a guy sitting in a chair right here. And one of them said, oh, sorry, we'll leave this to you. And as they turned to walk out, he disappeared. And they watched that happen here. But this was, and I mean, it still is, but it was a show place. This is one of the nicer theaters on that vaudeville circuit between St. Louis and Chicago. And, right. You know, Louis Armstrong played here, and that's, that's a, a big deal. Yeah. They, brought good, they brought big crowds here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, M, the MGM Lion, Leo the Lion that opens all the MGM films, he was here, and they charged 50 cents a day. They had him chained up on the stage, and you just paid 50 cents a head to walk Walked through, and him. he'd roar on command. And they made like cool. four grand. And that was, I don't remember what year that was, like wow. 1926 or something. Yeah. So, I mean, this, they hosted a lot of things. The, uh, the Luxor Mummy was here. They brought him here. Oh, wow. um, I think that's the Luxor Mummy. Yeah. They brought him here. Uh, and they go on so, donations to help restore the place, right? So if somebody wanted to donate something. Oh, sure. They could contact uh, on, through the, the website. Well, yeah, the website, the Lincoln Square Theater website. Uh, they happily take donations. A lot of what we do here. Uh, goes back to the theater. Our buddy Adam, who again, New Age Paranormal, does uh, workshops here. And they're like, uh, I think he does 30 bucks a head and he only lets 10 people in. And he prefers novices because it's training you, you know, right. on the equipment and things. And then you get the hunt for like three hours. Uh, and all of that goes to the theater. He doesn't make a penny off it. Uh, he also does walking tours. Uh, we have a Facebook page for that history at Honing, walking tours at the Lincoln. Now, it's important to remember, in, in the sake of historical context, this hallway is about the front. Uh, or it it's, would have been where one of the hallways in the old hotel was, and that plays a role here in a minute. When I tell you that the, uh, the hauntings probably begin with that fire, a couple of things have happened up here. Uh, first of all, we have a woman in, in 19th century clothes that shows up down here in this seating area uh, somewhere, uh, and I've never seen her, but she looks down onto the, the platform, or onto the stage, uh, apparently watching a show. I mean, that's all she does. There's another woman seen in the building, and she's seen out in that hallway where we're, we just walked through, um, and she seems to be wearing a nightgown. Nobody in the theater wearing a nightgown. I think it's residual from the hotel. Like she's wandering the halls because they didn't have bathrooms in their rooms. They had to leave and go down the hall and they see her out there. And I wonder, you know, if that's what she's doing. She's still hanging around after from that, from the hotel. Cause that would have been part of the hotel or where that part of the hotel sat. So we had a St. Jude's event. We, uh, we do a lot with friends and fans of St. Jude, raising money for St. Jude's children research. And we have a campaign called Raising Spirits for St. Jude. Uh, my friend Laura Richter put that together. We do a lot of things. And one of those things we did was raffle off a ghost hunt here. 
So we brought these people in and took them around the building, and then we turned all the lights on, and I stood on the stage and told them ghost stories. And we started to hear this. And we all turned and looked, and there was no one here. And by the time it was done, and it's went on for seven or eight minutes, by the time it was done, it was like this. And there was no one here. Wow. And it became this thing where I'd come in during the tours and I'd say, okay, do that jumping thing, because that was awesome. And sometimes they would. I'd be down there, and, and Adam, Jake's been here during tours when they'll be up here just and there's nobody here. And you really, I mean, it's a loose metal platform. But, yeah, I mean, you know, that's very distinct. That happens a lot. Well, maybe we can catch that. That'd be yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much for the tour. We're going to go ahead and go lights out and start our investigation. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> While investigating the middle balcony, Missy kept hearing noises below. This was the noise we captured. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> I made it to the top. Red, are you up here? Well, since you guys like shows, maybe if I put on a show up here, somebody will clap for me. I think that's what I was thinking from where we were. Is that her? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yay! That was good. Yes. This one's down. That one's down. Put them back up. These two are down. So they don't fall down pretty easy, huh? No, you gotta. Let's double check and make sure they're all up. Check on your way down. At this time, we made sure all the seats were up. There are claims of the seats folding down, something HHP experiences later that evening. Is there anybody in here with us? I hear those kids in here. Did you just hear something? No. Look at his headphones. <laughs> um, Shh, did you hear? It sounded like knocking or running. I think it's the furnace thing up there. Okay. Yeah, um, I just heard that kick on. What I would like to know is, first of all, who is in this room? And second of all, why do you pull on women's hair? Do you do it just for attention? So that we know you're here? Can you pull on Bobby's hair? Yeah, I mean, thanks. But not your hair. So can you give us a sign of your presence and let us know that you're here? Is there someone walking out there? Sounds like somebody's walking. Right out the door. Upon hearing this, immediately we went to investigate Hello? the basement. No one else was in the area, and unfortunately nothing was captured on our audio, but it was a personal experience we all shared. Yeah. See, the, um, the double A's and the triple A's do good. Mm -hmm. I think that just takes what? a lot of power. What? It sounded like a door shut, didn't it? I just went like that. That was you. Okay. 
What was that? Did you hear that? Oh, it's a seat up there. Did you hear the popping noise or whatever that was? Uh-uh. Did you hear that? Oh, it's a seat up there. Did you hear the popping noise or whatever that was? Uh-uh. Wait, this place is built up. But we, we can, you can make it work here, too. I heard it again. Over in that area. Do you hear that? Mm-mm. You looking through your pictures? Yeah, I should wait to do that when we get home. Yeah, probably. Well, I just got something black. What? Look like something like a shadow right in the center. Did you get it on the camera? No. Did you see it on the camera? I what? saw it with my eyes, like just out of the corner of my eye, I saw something look like it darted in the middle of the aisles. Like the big walkway in the middle. Mm -hmm. Like it was heading that way. It was just like 10 feet, you know, and that was gone. I wouldn't have even caught it on the camera. It didn't. Was that you? That was weird. Did you hear that squeak? It sounded like a chair, didn't it? Yeah. It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, though, because I'm looking, at the, chair I'm looking at the screen. And I'm looking up. That definitely sounded like a chair. Yeah. Now, you don't, those things aren't loose enough to fall by themselves? No. Mm -mm. I mean, I didn't test every single one of them. Right. But I guess we could always test one if it's down. Right. Like that one back there? Like what, what? Where I was hearing the noises. See it? Do you see it down? No. Where's my flashlight? It appears to be down. Can you tell on the camera if that's down? Which the one? one on the right in front of the door. In the hall. Right see, there. I see what you're about. Is it down? I don't think so. Okay. That's where I was hearing noises. That was the backstage. He said that they get a little bit more active like when you don't, or not like searching for them. Like if you're talking or, you know. That was me. Can you, whoa, 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 look over there. Do you see that seat down over there? The main, I, it's on the very end on the aisle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. Okay, here's the seat. This is one that we definitely put down or back up. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that one was definitely up. This one was definitely up. Number seven. L. Uh oh. That I'm, was pretty easy. Yeah, but we should have heard it. Right. Well, we did hear a squeak. We heard a squeak. So let's see. Does this squeak? That was what we heard. That's like the squeak was we heard. Sitting in it, you know. That's the squeak we heard. That's what we heard. Now see, it didn't That's slam. It. it went real no, slow. No, it went yeah. really slow. That That's was it. Very scary sounding. You got a little kid trying to come through, and then you got this deep voice, man. That sounds kind of threatening. Threatening. And maybe it's just his exterior. There's a kid laughing or something. Can you hear that, Matt? The kid laughing. Can we talk to the little kid? While the spirit box was rolling, both Missy and I saw two different shadows in the audience part of the theater. This again with no evidence to back it up is just a personal experience. What's your favorite seat in here?
No, I just saw that light get blocked out. That little night light thing right there. Right there, yeah. Wait, one good thing about them putting in those uh, new runway lights is that, uh, I guess that's what you call them. Uh, I've noticed lately that they're blocking out, like, kind of like... That's what I saw. She saw that. Yeah. That's awesome. She totally saw that. And yeah. I was totally waiting for one of you guys to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Cool. Yeah, we got that. HHP's episode 6 Twitter fan of the week is Josh Elliott. Thank you for all of your support. And I want to thank John again for having us in here and telling us all these wonderful stories. And we'll see you later. The Lincoln Theater, a pit stop on the road to stardom for so many up-and-coming actors, also is a building full of different emotions, from laughter to tears, always keeping the audience coming back for more. The opportunity to come into the theater exclusively was a dream come true for all of us at HHP. If you ever get the chance to walk into the Lincoln, I would highly recommend to take them up on the offer. Till next time, happy hunting. Cheesy freeze. <clears throat> the cheesy freeze. Yeah. It's like I don't know what to do afterwards. Yeah. Like I just looked at you and <laughs> tried not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that okay. was awesome. That was really good. I'm excited.